This is Mac OS Ken. A record close for Apple shares, a killer quarter for Apple services, and a zombie hunt for the fourth. It is Wednesday, the 3rd of July, 2024. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Apple shares ended the day with a record close on Tuesday. Ticker symbol AAPL wound up at 22027 with gains of 352 in Tuesday trading. Was that due to the continued AI excitement? Or maybe the rumor I brought you yesterday that Apple has increased orders for processors for the next round of iPhone, apparently expecting to sell 10 million more units at the start than it did for the iPhone 15 line. Whatever the case, it is a thing that happened. While it's a record for the Cupertino company, Apple was not the only tech giant that had a good day. Microsoft was up 255, enough to guard its current position as the most valuable publicly traded company on the planet. Mr. Softy has a current market cap of $3.41 trillion, just ahead of second place Apple, with its market cap of $3.38 trillion. June was not as good for the App Store as May, though the June quarter was better than expected. That is the word from Evercore analyst Amit Daryanani. Apple 3.0 ran part of a note he wrote earlier this week. Quoting that, App Store revenue grew 12% in June, a slight step down from the 15% rate in May as compares got more challenging. This brings the June quarter growth rate to 13%, which could support upside to current street estimates from the services business. Makes sense he would think so. Three months ago, the analyst says... He and his were expecting App Store growth closer to 10% in the June quarter. Interestingly, Mr. Darianani is tracking crazy App Store growth in the EU. Notably, writes the analyst, EU App Store revenues were up 30% in the month of June versus up 25% in May, despite implementation of the EU DMA-driven changes to the App Store. Looking ahead, Mr. Darianani sees double-digit growth continuing for Apple services, as long as the DOJ doesn't kill the payments Apple's getting from Google to be Safari's default search engine, and App Store sales don't fall apart. Tough compares for the rest of the year could lead to a slowdown in growth, though the analyst says this has not materialized yet. Mr. Darianani has an outperform rating on Apple shares, his price target on the shares is 250 bucks. Speaking of Apple services and the DMA, a piece from Engadget says the App Store for Apple Vision Pro will allow alternate payment methods in the European Union. It's not quite a last-minute announcement, though. It is timely. Apple's headset hits two EU countries, France and Germany, a week from Friday, on the 12th of July. If you're looking for a way to kill time this holiday weekend, how about killing some video game zombies? A piece from Mac Rumors says the game's publisher Capcom has released Resident Evil 7 Biohazard for totally modern Apple hardware. That's for iPhone 15 Pro, iPhone 15 Pro Max, and any Mac or iPad running an M-series processor. According to a Wikipedia entry on the game, the player controls Ethan Winters as he searches for his long-missing wife in a derelict plantation occupied by an infected family, solving puzzles, and fighting enemies. Resident Evil 7 diverges from the more action-oriented Resident Evil 5 and 6, returning to the franchise's survival horror roots, emphasizing exploration. So I guess less killing zombies and more skulking around them. Hitting the how it works part, Mac Rumor says the game runs natively on Apple Silicon with support for cross-progression and universal purchase, letting Apple users play the game across iPhone, iPad, and Mac with a single purchase and transfer their saved games between devices. Also, no purchase necessary. At least not to start. 
The piece says players can play the first part of the game for free. Unlocking the bulk of the game will run players $19.99. There is also a Gold Edition DLC upgrade. Not sure what that includes, but it'll run an additional 20 bucks. Try not to get eaten. Or whatever. As jerks in traffic follow too closely, so do public betas follow developer betas along Apple's OS highway. A couple of pieces from Mac Rumors have that traffic report. One has the second public betas of iOS and iPadOS 17.6 motoring along, while another has the second public beta of macOS Sonoma 14.6. Public testers, time to get behind the wheel. People who want to hit that road can find directions at beta.apple.com. And remember, you get traffic and weather together when I feel like it on macOS Ken. Keep it right here. From the Who is Where file, one of Apple's former power people is off to the EV maker Rivian. 9 to 5 Mac cites a report from the site Rivian Tracker that says Jeff Alves is hanging up his Apple lanyard after 11 years to join the car maker's battery engineering team. Having come to Apple in 2013, Alves went to work right away on the charging system for Apple Watch, hence my calling him a power person. He also did work tied to Apple's now abandoned car project, based on the number of Apple patents on which his name turns up. Seems to be a decent amount of Apple seeping into Rivian's DNA. The piece says the move by Alves will reunite him with former Apple colleagues Jonas Ranke and DJ Novotny. They both left Apple for Rivian earlier this year. And finally today, going places without going anywhere is jolly good Apple fellow Phil the Thrill Schiller. Mac Rumor cites a Bloomberg report that says the Apple exec is taking a board observer position at OpenAI. Well, if he's bored already, why... Oh, bored. <laughs> I pretend to misunderstand. The piece explains, A board observer is an informal board position where the participant is able to attend and contribute to board meetings, but is not allowed to vote and has no control. Well, if he's got no control, should they even let him in? Oh, like no controlling interest. <laughs> I pretend to be confused. Given the billions of dollars Microsoft has given to the open AI cause, you'll not be surprised to hear that Mr. Softy also has a board observer role at the company's table. Bloomberg figures one of those observers will be asked to leave the room when moves between open AI and the other company are discussed. And that will do a short week for Mac OS Ken, though... There are other shows on the way. This Friday on the Mac Observer Show, Dr. Robert Hurt is a visualization scientist working at IPAC, a science and data center for astrophysics at the California Institute of Technology. His work has been used by NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and he is huge into virtual reality and augmented reality. So how does he feel about Apple Vision Pro? He'll compare and contrast Apple's spatial computer and the MetaQuest line on this week's Mac Observer Show. You can hear that wherever you get podcasts or watch it on TMO's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash MacObserver. And on the checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. It is our summer blockbuster security special. What can the movies Star Trek II, The Empire Strikes Back, and Independence Day teach us about security? Find out on our annual 4th of July special, because why should Christmas have all the fun? Look for checklist number 382, the annual summer blockbuster special. Find it at securemac.com slash checklist, or wherever you Get podcasts. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and supported by people like you. P.
patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macoscan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. It's still sunny.